each of the speakers uh, in this series are given uh, just a handful of minutes to um, give a perspective on the mosque. And it's the, the questions that they're basically asked are to define the universe, give three examples, and um, do it all in like five minutes or less. So there's a lot of knowledge uh, from each of the speakers in, in all four of the sessions that are available for the public to participate in. And this is really about, about starting dialogues and recognizing some of the expertise within our own community so that people can go to those folks um, either outside here or with the questions that are going on here or just um, in other places in the community. So, uh, Enrique La Madrid um, is retired um, only in the, in the um, official capacity of being a department chair at UNM, but his retirement is um, really not happening. Is that true? I don't think so. Yeah. And so one of the things that Professor La Madrid brings to this experience is um, a sense of the Rio Grande across the entire watershed. From the high uh, mountains by, by Mora, where he has written about um, and, and had great illustrations by um, Amy Cordova with um, her folklore-inspired uh, artwork of the acequias and the communities that define so much of the, that portion of New Mexico, to coming across the entire um, Camino Royal and finding people and their stories and their faith and how they have intertwined across this landscape for, for many, many centuries. Um, and looking at even the, the conquered and the conquering and how they might share a same saint and understanding that the languages and the stories that weave us together back and forth are very much the same uh, healthy bosque story of a braided waterway that brings people together, swings out, creates a little oxbow and opportunity for life. And those are a lot of the pathways and stories that he brings to his understanding of a waterway that definitely extends across multiple uh, countries and many different kinds of people. So thank you very much for sharing your wisdom of the Bosque with us. Thank you, and, and that, the idea of river as metaphor is really, is really important. Part of the history of the river is, of course, the history of the ways people have spoken about the river over the ages. Um, there's an absence of southern Tiwa words in here, and it, uh, it's in deference to uh, a lot of the feelings out there in the Pueblos. My friend and colleague, uh, Ted Hohola from Isleta, um, uh, has tried to, to, to get Tiwa taught for many years, and is always uh, uh, rebuffed by uh, the, the, the Pueblo Council over there. And, and of course, the first thing they did when the new casino opened is, is write uh, Southern Tiwan names for each uh, salon in the casino. So anyway, there's uh, the Tewa word, however, called Soge, uh, Great River, Big River, is, is in the same linguistic family. So these, it's important to, to look at our terminology and and see what underlies all of this. Uh, I even learned a little bit about my own name. Uh, Madrid is, of course, a, a, a capital city, but the, you've heard the terms uh, Madre Veta, the mother load. We use, we use the term mother uh, in the same way in, in a lot of our English uh, terminology, but the word for floodplain is actually La Madre del Rio, the mother of the river. The floodplain is the mother of the river. So I don't know if La Madrid has anything to do with that, but it's an, it's an interesting idea. The, I'm, I'm so glad that uh, people over at uh, Bosque School have gotten on the bandwagon uh, and respecting some of these, these linguistic uh, traditions here. The, the amazing thing is that there really is a word bosque, and it is an adjective, and we have a, we have a very bosque river. Uh, it, it's an adjective that's so old that only people like Robert Burns uh, would, would use it in their poetry. It, it's, it's used in Scotland as, uh, it just means wooded, it means wooded. And so that's, that's some of the interplay going back and forth between English and Spanish. And I, I usually start with a Spanish class and make everybody go, oh, no, 
Polskie, Polskie. And then we can switch back to English and go, yeah, we have a very bosky river. But uh, one's an adjective, the other's a noun. Uh, the, other, the other really basic concept I want to introduce at, at, in, in this talk is, has to do with, with the semantic charges of Bosque versus Alameda. Uh, we have the largest cottonwood forest in North America, depending on how much of it burns uh, every year. <laughs> and these, of course, are Alamos. Uh, we have Alamos de la Sierra, aspen trees, and, or Alamitos, Alamillos, and, and these big grandmother uh, and grandfather Alamos in, in the valley. And so we have a word for a grove of cottonwoods, a very beautiful word, uh, Alameda. And what's interesting about Alameda is it has a very cultural connotation. Every major city in Latin America, whether it's Santiago de Chile or uh, Mexico de Efe, uh, everybody's got a central park. And, and they often are called uh, Alamedas. And they're often near rivers, and, they're, and they're off, they often contain uh, uh, trees, uh, if not cottonwoods, and related to cottonwoods. But an Alameda is a, if, if not a manicured place, it, it's definitely a cultural space that uh, developed out of maybe uh, a beautiful grove that had been there when the city was, was forming. And it was just so beautiful that people didn't cut it down. They, they made paths through it. Um, and down in Mexico, they civilized the, the Alamos by, by, painting, by painting the first four feet with, uh, with white white paint, and it, it, it's funny, you ask about that, and our students ask about that, and what's the purpose of that? You never get two similar answers, but it, it's, it's to dress them up, it's to, it's to include them in a cultural vision of place. So Alameda means all of those things. Bosque is a much wilder word, which we have to be very careful when, when we use in thinking, well, you know, how wild is it really? Uh, in a landscape which is so controlled as the landscape which is just a few blocks from here. Um, it's interesting, these, these paintings that Douglas Johnson did about the, the Coronado expedition and, and really the terrible two winters that, that were spent. And notice how, notice how uh, people have, we all have this tendency to project what is into imaginary spaces. During the winters of 1541 and 1542, or was it 1540 and 15, 1541, is there, a, is there a historian in the house? Uh, there was not one stick of firewood left anywhere. People were freezing to death. It was the, it was, there was a little ice age going on. And Coronado, the, the thug that he was, uh, it was illegal to be conquistadors already by then, but he was, he shared a lot of those uh, of those tendencies with him, and of course Onyate, who came later, is definitely not a conquistador uh, because the word itself was illegal by then. Uh, so people, it, the crown became very cognizant that they had to, they can't just send ruffians and thugs out there. They have to be uh, religious uh, workers uh, overlooking what they what they did. But that's not what we're looking at. We're looking at at Doug's uh, bosque over here. And boy, uh, if, if it had looked like that, then Coronado would, would, would not have had to tear down every single Pueblo in this valley. Every single Pueblo was razed to the ground, um, not so much because of the war, but because uh, there was no firewood. They were getting the vigas and the latias and stuff uh, to burn to keep from freezing. So, uh, so what is this thing called the bosque? Uh, leña, by the way, is firewood. El problema de la leña, the, the Coronado's uh, firewood um, problem. Let me see if this is uh, yes, me calling us. No, um, I'm on. I'm on call to be timer for her for her and to uh, make sure she gets she gets here on time. Okay, uh, the last presentation talked about uh, this this whole business. This is an area south of Cochiti Dam. And notice how the channeling has been defined. And crecientes, or floods, 
Sin crecientes, no hay más álamos. Without floods, there are no more álamos. We just have ones from the past. This is really a very, um, it's really a very precarious ecosystem. It's very ephemeral. It seems like it's, there's something forever about it, but it really is quite ephemeral. Uh, these, are, these are two images from a book that we're doing in the Querencia series, edited by Melissa Savage, uh, one of the Otter Team people. And this is uh, a really interesting bridge. We've got some close-ups of it. Uh, we, we, what we've got is a collection of photographs from, eight, from the 1860s to, through 1963 that we're publishing, just old photographs of the river with that, essays by people like Bill DeBuise and, and Levi Romero and Rina Swensel. It's going to be a great book. But uh, anyway, where is the bosque? You can, you look at a lot of old pictures of Albuquerque, if there's any population nearby, uh, this is what you'll find. The village is over here. San Felipe is on the, the west side as it is today. And notice, uh, not a stick, not a stick left. Uh, this is up by La Joya de Velarde. This does not mean jewel, as a lot of people insist, dictionaries in hand. Uh, Jewel is with a Y, they sound the same, but uh, we, we do have a cognate in Spanish, in English, which is holler. It's way down in the holler. And uh, a holler is a, is a hollow, is a low spot, very, very nice for agriculture. And so, sequia uh, suerte, suertes are the long lot, the way land was, uh, was inherited, and you can see what an acequia landscape is all about. And you can see just little pieces of, of Bosquecito, I guess you could call it, over here and maybe over here. So a lot has happened. I, I, I do the cultural piece on the river. Uh, this is what we did in Alameda last year. The, the Campo Santo, I told people to quit calling it a cemetery. Cemeteries can be moved. Uh, this used to be right near the intersection of Rio Grande and Alameda. This is the Immaculada Concepcion Church, 1710 to 1903. This is what happened in 1903. That's what's left of the Barelas Bridge. You've all seen the wonderful public art piece uh, by, uh, by Bill, I mean by Bruce uh, Papito. And this is what happened last January. The, the Campo Santo, they started putting phone lines in there. The county knew it was there, but yet it was platted for trophy houses long ago. And when they put a, a vacuum sewer in there, they noticed that the, that the phone lines, the phone lines had gone right straight through about six cranium. And uh, uh, in, in the dig that was done for, by UNM for the sewer, uh, 125 individuals were identified. Well, they, they weren't identified. They were, they were identified as individuals. And we fit them all in, in four big boxes and uh, took him up to the San Jose Cemetery up by the bal balloon park. It was a really amazing conversation between the living and the dead. And all in, uh, since it is, since it is um, Carnaval, as we call it, um, there are so many things that disappear with, with spring flooding. Uh, there were significant pieces of, of bosque over by Corrales. In fact, one of the, one of the nicknames for the Corraleños is uh, Los Hongueros. I think that's what the guys from, from, uh, uh, from Alameda call them, since there was uh, not much of a, of a bosque on the Alameda side. Oh, the river, by the way, moved from Edith to its present location. It took out everything in between, 1903. Anyway, every year when the spring floods come through for Easter, and you get this kind of thing sprouting almost overnight. I mean, this, when they're fresh, when they're fresh, uh, they, they're really, really delicious. And, they, uh, and, and you make them with red chili. This is one of the disappeared things from our local folkways. And uh, uh, it, it's worth bringing back. You won't poison yourself, because all bracket, there's no poisons in bracket fungi, but you don't want to eat old ones, because they taste like, ugh, like sawdust. You want to get the fresh ones. The people in Corrales would, uh, would dry them and sell them by the sack, trade them for other stuff. So a lot of culture in our bosque, a lot of culture along our river and in our city. Gracias.